Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Mr. Rockwell, Rick, and Aaron, thank you for being here today. Because of the networks you described earlier that you've been able to develop and the conversations you've had with other parents that unfortunately have suffered uh, what, what you have gone through, what, what are, and you talked about kind of the elected officials maybe getting more involved or doing, doing specific things. What, what are some of those things that you could relay kind of to the full committee today that, that you see would be, you know, clearly things that need to be done and, and done as quickly as possible? Sure. Our, um, again, our main focus is the education and awareness. So the, one of the things would be making sure that these uh, young children in our country are educated at an earlier age or educated at all um, and not leaving it up to the families of the victims to do that work. Um, having some mandated education on, I mean, this, as a foundation, we're not going to, we, Aaron and I and our, and our members are not going to stop the flow of fentanyl. Um, we can only do as, uh, as much as we can with the education awareness. So that's uh, one of the, one of the big things that would help us. You have a relationship, I'm sure you do, with um, law enforcement and were there, were there things that maybe happened on campus and that were repeated that you think, you know, could be avoided? Maybe more awareness or what, what are some of the strategies you think that could work? Sure, definitely. And, and one of the big things that I mentioned it too was the stigma. So, so we, we, we get a lot of resistance when we, when we talk to schools or talk to like the university. When we first started talking to the university after Logan passed away, um, we didn't start we didn't realize that there was this big need for this awareness until nine months later when another another young man, Cade, Cade passed away from the same same pill. And we, we asked the university, was anything done? They, they didn't even, there was no awareness made, made to any of the kids. So there needs to be, um, I mean, they get, a, they get aware, they get alerts when, when there's a storm coming. Um, these, these kids need to know that these, these dangers are out there. Um, and, and you hear about bad batches and stuff, but there's no bad batches anymore. Fentanyl is just bad at, at all uh, together. So they, they just need this awareness. And so one of the things that happened with us um, talking to the school is they, they are now more receptive. Um, they, they have gotten um, Narcan installed, which um, I'm not gonna get into that, but um, that through um, our efforts and other, effort, other nonprofits, we've, we've gotten Narcan um, installed in, in primarily all the uh, UW campuses in Wisconsin. So that, that's a great thing, just knowing the signs, getting that education. Now, now at UWM, they're, they're having um, education in their orientation. So they're, they're actually talking about it when the kids first come into school. So that's, those are the things we need. It's just that awareness. Um, I know it's not going to 100% uh, get rid of the, the issue, but, but that would help. Good, thank you. I, 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 yeah, and I do apologize too. Um, Congressman Tiffany asked me the question about talking to the law enforcement earlier, and the uh, my nerves nerves just got to me. But I did want to. I we do work um, with the DEA in Washington, right? And the question was brought to me about how, uh, the the flow of fentanyl, and I did want to bring this up because I I, I felt bad because I kind of froze up. But um, if I if I'm correct with my numbers, just in 2023, there. The DEA confiscated almost 80 million fentanyl pills and almost 30,000 pounds of fentanyl powder. That's almost 15 tons. So if you equate that back to the two milligrams that it take, that that's considered a lethal dose, that's like 6.5 billion billion doses that could that could kill. I mean, million lethal doses. So I'm Very sorry, 6.5 billion doses. <laughs> okay. It's so um, so. Uh, I'm going to ask the DA kind of a, the more technical aspect of this. Right now, we've had a bill, the last two Congresses, to actually label uh, fentanyl as a Schedule I narcotic. Uh, that bill is not passed, which is just simply unbelievable to me at this point. Uh, and if you talk to people, members of Congress, they're, they're amazed by this too, why we can't get this done. Um, from a DA's perspective, how do you view crimes or uh, certainly anything related to a Schedule One narcotic? And do you think it would make a difference uh, when it comes to prosecuting some of these crimes related to fentanyl? I think it definitely has the opportunity to help. We, we know the danger that fentanyl is and just how potent it is and it's taken very seriously. But once you start putting drugs into that Schedule One category, that's certainly 
uh, gives us more tools, and we'll take any tools that you're able to give us that can help us prosecute these cases.